Tonight, Angela Hazeltine Pozzi knows that when you get lemons, you make lemonade. It's kind of beautiful and sort of horrifying. But what do you make when all you get is garbage? You know, we throw away things, but we don't know where away is. Can one woman really save the oceans with art? Hello, welcome to Bandon. It's a charming little seaside town. We're following this vehicle right here, and inside of that vehicle right there are uh, two people. Uh, one person is called uh, Angela, and she makes art out of stuff that uh, washes up on the shore. There's, uh, there's a fellow named Frank. I'm not exactly sure yet what his relationship is with Angela. That's all gonna be revealed very soon. But for now, we're just following a van to a charming seaside destination whereupon the show will commence. Don't lose her, Steve. Don't lose her. If you like long walks on a big beach, do yourself a favor and drive up the Oregon coast. It is absolutely gorgeous. All right, gentlemen, let's begin. And if you're annoyed by the ubiquitous presence of tiny pieces of deadly plastic, I recommend walking with Angela Hazeltine Pozzi. These are called nurdles. Come close, we're about to learn about nurdles. Nurdles are the pre-production plastic pellets. Every bit of plastic starts in this form and they are really deadly because they look like eggs. They look like something a fish would eat. Yeah. Nurdles are the tiny, humble beginnings of things like this, and this, and this. And Angela knows all about that. Look at that thing. Do you know what that is? This is the part of the die cut of a flip-flop factory. Discard. Why do you know that? Because I've picked up so many of them. Angela's what you call a bloody do-gooder. She hates nurdles, and she hates garbage, and she's appalled by the endless junk that washes up on her beautiful beach in Bandon. But rather than merely complain about man's crass indifference to our environment, she's turning all that trash into something beautiful and getting all sorts of attention for her efforts. For the past five years, Angela and her husband, Frank Rocco, have been turning Bandon's flotsam and jetsam into towering sculptures of marine life. Like many bloody do-gooders, Angela has a nonprofit. Hers is called Washed Ashore, and its goal is to make a colorful connection between what we throw away and the planet we're trashing when we do so. You know, we throw away things, but we don't know where away is, you know? It's here. It's here. And man, we sure do throw a lot of stuff away. This is a good one. What do you got there? This has got fish bites in it. So why is this a good piece of trash? Well, it's a highly educational one because those are bite marks by fish. Mm -hmm. And that is evidence that, you know, what's going on with the plastics in the ocean. So the fish are eating. The fish are eating plastic. Plastic. Can't be good. Can't be good. And that right there is part of Angela's mission, to educate people about what's going on in our oceans. An education, she hopes, will affect changes in our consumer habits. I don't know what to do. I mean, I'm walking, there, there's so much of it. Most people don't have any idea how big of a problem it is. Well, Frank really hit the mother load there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> some sort of spanking device. <laughs> <laughs> like most macro problems, water pollution has a micro component, the nurdle. Nurdles are the tiny pieces of raw plastic that get melted down and molded into a litany of other products that people love to throw away. But nurdles themselves also have a way of spilling into the ocean by the billions. There, they get sucked into a swirling vortex of toxic junk called the Great Pacific Garbage Patch, where they hook up with all sorts of other non-biodegradable products and slowly murder a host of seabirds and marine mammals. Angela Pozzi didn't have any of this in mind when she started making art out of the trash she gathered off the beaches of Oregon. In fact, Washed Ashore started as a kind of therapy when things went terribly wrong for her first husband. He was misdiagnosed and told he had panic attacks for eight years. And then we found out he had a brain tumor. Tragic. Yeah. Total tragic. Yeah. Life kind of fell apart and then he died. So you were left more or less bereft. I was a mess. And I basically didn't know why I should be living. You know, what's the point of life? You know, why am I here still? Yeah. 
and I thought I gotta go figure it out. So I'd been sort of looking at stuff on the beach and when I was grieving, I didn't want to see garbage, I wanted to see beauty. And then one day I saw people picking up agates along the shoreline and picking up shells and I thought, I need to get those people to pick up this stuff. <laughs> How am I gonna do that? I'd been a teacher for years and I thought, well, I'll just start teaching workshops and what if I said free art supplies? Everybody go to the beach and get free art supplies, you know? From that humble beginning, Angela and her volunteers have transformed 16 tons of plastic into 64 sculptures that have been shown all over the world. And it all started with this seagull. What do we got here? This is Avery. He was one of our first sculptures. He's about five years old now. Mm -hmm. And he's just covered with all the... All of this is garbage off of the beaches, every single bit of it. These are called trash kebabs. And then those are shoes and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> I designed them, but like each one of these little pieces here was stitched by a different volunteer. Yeah. So this Separate. is called a panel. Mm -hmm. So everybody helped solve the problem because everybody working together can make big things happen. That's the whole idea. Angela's operation is not really about Angela. It's about a lot of people happy to get their hands dirty. I've got a crew of people washing. Hi, guys. Mike. Basically, we spray everything off to start with, and then we start scrubbing it. We've got soapy water. We also use vinegar. See, see that thing right there? The thing right here? Yeah. Remember what we saw on the beach? Oh, that's the, that the cutouts that... for the... Huh, they're everywhere. Yeah. This is stuff that's just been brought in over the last month or year? Oh, no, no, no. Day? This is just about a week's worth. So when the things reach the deck, they've already been washed or cleaned enough. Uh-huh. So then we, we set it up in a rainbow color uh -huh. so that we can sort of go through it and pick out something specific. Because there's no end in sight to the plastic washing up on beaches around the world, there's no end to the sculptures Angela and her team are making. In fact, they have several going on at the same time, all the time. So you guys did this basically from scratch? Oh yeah, yeah, Absolutely. the whole bit. Yeah, we had all the, we do the plans and, and the layout and the drawing. So we're going to be able to finish this today before we go? <laughs> Our work takes a long time. It does. From start to finish, how long are we talking? Ay, ay, ay. Six to eight months. <laughs> Much as I'd like to linger in Bandon for the next six to eight months, I'm afraid that's not in the cards. Happily, though, Angela is always on the verge of finishing something. Meet Zora. Oh, she's coming along. She's a rockhopper penguin from Antarctica. Are the feet pink in real life? They are. See? See, those are my models. Oh, yeah. <laughs> See that? I mean, they jump all the time, so they have real muscular feet. See, you know, through here, you, that's great. You use little pieces of rubber up there. These are all flip-flop tops. Uh-huh. And uh, brushes. Brushes, yeah. That's great. Cigarette Just, lighters. You see the toilet seat covers? <laughs> yeah, it's fine. So if you want to look at shapes and lines, okay? So this is a little art lesson. Mm -hmm. okay? okay. So if you notice, I've got sort of lines coming down to sort of do the fur-like thing. And we want to keep the verticality of the lines. So we don't want to have- Verticality? Yes, so we don't want to have any big horizontal lines going. It'll break right. the, the flow. All right. Some days are weirder than others. Today I'm screwing a boot into a penguin's butt. Life really is a rich pageant. Have a boot on either side? I gotta say, it's breathtaking. <laughs> Ooh, this is a great thing. If you're just joining us, we're putting a tail on a penguin with a variety of flotsam and jetsam collected from the beach. And it's coming together pretty well. But one thing is for sure, She's a beauty. Absolutely. You did great. I think we're done. All right, so take one last look at uh, Zora. Zora Bell. And really, you're open right now to licensing this, <laughs> this creature in a zoo or an aquarium or really any place of business. Let her teach about conservation and saving the ocean. Because even in the Antarctic, there's plastics. And just like that, it's a feel-good story. Angela Pozzi picks up the trash on the beach 
turns it into giant artistic sculptures. Then people license the sculptures all over the country. And here in Bandon, Oregon, she has a gallery to showcase her work. I've stopped by to meet the locals and say hello. Here we go. Oh, guess what? We're locked up. And that's how the show ends. <laughs> Well, well, well. Remember the gyre from the last act? The great Pacific garbage patch we told you about? Angela's brought it to life, and it's hard to miss. This is our gyre sculpture. This is the idea that if you were in the middle of the gyre and you were a fish looking for food, it'd kind of feel like this. So that's the inspiration of this. It's kind of beautiful and sort of horrifying. That's exactly what we go for. This is a giant whale skeleton. It's made entirely of plastic bottles, the same sort of plastic bottles that kill giant whales. Ironic, no? I remember I told you about the day that really got me. You see how I just got sick to my stomach? What we saw was so small compared to that. And this is really, like I said, this could be any beach in the world. So I can't ever buy plastics or anything for my artwork ever again. I have to just use what's on the beach. Remember that barn raising scene in Witness where all the Amish come out to help the neighbor put up a new barn? For the people in this community, washed ashore is kind of like that. They've all got skin in the game, and it's amazing how many want to pitch in, make a difference. Why do you do it? I think it's when you first see Angela's work, you're just taken by the beauty. Mm. And then all of a sudden you realize every single bit of this is garbage that washed up on our beach. And you look here, every one of those is a bottle. And you just start seeing it and you get overwhelmed. You think, yeah. Oh my God, this isn't beautiful at all. This is absolutely disgusting. Yeah. And that's why you do it. Angela's goal is to go out of business. But until she runs out of art supplies, <laughs> the work will continue. But there's no doubt, the message is catching on. You know what you're actually working on here? Mm -hmm. What? Uh, the inside of a jellyfish. I see. You know why we're making the inside of a jellyfish? Because we recycle the trash. That's correct. Why is it important to recycle trash? So, like, fish don't eat it. Mm -hmm. don't it. That's correct. What happens if fish eat trash? They will probably die. That's correct. And why is it bad if the fish die? Because we fish the fish and we eat them, and they're natural to our environment. That's correct. They're natural to our environment, and we eat them. And if the fish eat the plastic and the fish die, that ultimately makes problems for who? Us. Correct. Well, that's unusual. So Angela's found a way to get people talking about nurdles and giant garbage patches. And that's a good thing. And with her art comes the occasional soundtrack. Probably not a top 40 tune, but music to the ears, nevertheless, for those who got to do it. One, two, three, four. Yeah, you guys rock. <laughs>